over the last year, my good buddy Josh has been building up his 2021 Jeep Gladiator, and we've been out on some great adventures, getting after it in the rocks, hitting some amazing camp spots. He's done so many cool things to this Jeep, and in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna meet with him, we're gonna talk about why he's done some of the things, what he's done, and some more future plans. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and this is my good buddy Josh from SoCal Expedition. And today, man, I'm super excited, dude. We're gonna take a close-up, detailed look of your Jeep Gladiator, man. But first, let's talk about the trip we just got back from. Oh yeah. 10, Ten days yeah. up in Washington, how was it? It was amazing, it really was. It was great to see Nate and uh, get to meet his uh, son and his family and hang out with Regina yeah. and get to know her a little better. But uh, the just the, the scenery was incredible. I didn't realize Washington was like that. Yeah, the rainforest up yeah. in the Olympic Peninsula, yep. man, I, I don't know, that was a highlight for me. It, it was really, yeah, beautiful. it was gorgeous. Yeah, the mosquitoes were a little thick. A couple times. <laughs> a couple times, but it was all right. Yeah. And then a couple months ago, you brought this out to Death Valley, which was a completely different type of trip. Talk about that. Yeah, Death Valley was more technical, a lot harder trails. It was, most of it was off-road. I think we did 3,000 miles in Washington and a few hundred of it was off-road. Right. Death Valley was almost all off-road. Yeah. And we were getting after it quite a bit, and this thing performed yeah, super well. It did. Yeah, It was awesome, even with everything that's on it. Even it with was, everything yeah. that's on it, which we'll, we'll talk about. Yeah. Before we start talking about what you've done to this and kind of why you've chosen some of the stuff you have, you have a, a really nice Jeep Wrangler that we filmed on this channel before, uh, but this last year you made the transition to the Gladiator. What's kind of the reason for that, and what was the inspiration for this build? So with the JL being the daily driver and all of the gear and all of the stuff that was put on it, it got really heavy, right? And so in looking at the Gladiator when you had yours and just kind of seeing how much more you could put on them and they're still very, very capable. Yeah. And most of the time we're not doing crazy stuff that this won't make it through. So for camping and those types of things, I wanted to go to the Gladiator. Um, I still have the Wrangler. Yeah. Um, it doesn't come out very often, but uh, soon it will be. I'm uh, gonna kind of redo some of the things on it, but this one is more of the expedition vehicle, yeah. overlander, comfortable camper. Yeah, 10 days up in Washington, <laughs> this thing fit the bill pretty good. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, well let's dive into uh, some of the things that you've done for it. First of all, what model Jeep is this? It is a 2021 Gladiator diesel. So I did go with the diesel. It is a Rubicon model and it's got the 3.0 uh, diesel engine in it. I went to that for fuel economy and torque and a few other things. And I just really want, I liked the idea of having a diesel. Yeah, and what color? Hydro blue. Hydro blue, dude, I love the yeah. color, man. It looks it, so good. It, it does. It does look good. Okay, uh, let's talk about some of the things that you've already upgraded. This bumper is pretty unique. I don't know that I've seen it on anybody else's uh, Jeep pictures. What is this bumper? Addictive Desert Designs. I, I was looking for kind of a hybrid, like pro style uh, tube bumper. Was looking to go aluminum possibly to stay lighter. And then when I saw this and the weight of it isn't a full steel everywhere. Uh, it is steel everywhere, but it wasn't a massive weight that went on. So it, it stayed light, but it still fit the bill for being yeah. steel. Yeah, no, it's solid, man. I really like it. Uh, what what winch are you running? Uh, just the Warren Xeon uh, 12S. It, same one I had on the Wrangler, except it's the 12,000 pound. Yeah, so 12,000 pounds, you're going to not want for anything uh, if you need to pull this out. No. Uh, but you haven't used this for yourself yet. Nope. Yeah, or, or have you haven't used it for anybody yet? Have I have you? not had to pull anybody out well, yet. That's good. Yep. Uh, that's good news. Uh, now, you've got, you've got a ton of amber lights. Before we talk about it, why amber over the white? Well, all of them are covers that can come off pretty easily, so I could go to white, but I love the amber in the dust. It makes it a lot easier to see, in my opinion. And to, you know, just to be honest, it, it, it went with the blue. It's aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> it's aesthetically pleasing. Well, it is functional though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're right. When and you're in the is, dust yeah. or the fog, you don't get the refraction you do from the white light you do Correct. from the amber. So, all right, talk to me about what lights you've got uh, up here on the bumper. So these are the Flex series that Casey had out a couple years back. Okay. And I don't believe they uh, sell these anymore. They're converting to the Flex Eras, okay. which we both have a few of those. Um, but I like these rather than 
the typical Jeep round. I love the look of the rounds, but sometimes I like to be different, so yeah. I went with the flexes. Okay, so you've got uh, what are these like a dual pod yep. up front, and it's, then how big is this one up here? This is a 20 inch bar in the front. Okay, 20 inch, and then you have the Flex Era 4s back yep. there. What mount are you using for those? It's the KC mount okay. that they sell. Nice. And those put out a ton of light. I, I've seen you in the back, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you're not wanting for light at all when these things are lit up. Now, skid plate underneath the bumper, does that come stock with this? It does. It comes on this. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and now, under the hood, have you done any modifications to the engine or anything under there? There's nothing modified. It's bone stock. Bone stock. Yeah. No switch pods or anything like that? Nope. Everything, and no plans to do any modifications to it? Uh, I've got a Switch Pro I may put in for some other functionality, but right now everything's running off of the uh, stock switches inside the Gladiator. Okay, well cool man. Well let's, uh, let's hop over and let's talk uh, tires and suspension. All right. One of the cool things about Jeep is you, you can just customize so much stuff and I really like the bronze little details that you've done in the decals. That's pretty cool. Where did you get that done at? Uh, Pixel decals okay. online. I replaced a, almost every badge on the Jeep, even some of the aftermarket stuff. I really wanted to tie everything together, one theme, one color, Yeah. Um, which is kind of the reason why I did the bronze wheels. I don't want too much, but I would just Wanted to be enough. It, it looks good, man. Now talk about these wheels. What are you running? These are the Icon compression wheels, 17, eight and a half. Um, they're, I believe, four and a half inch backspacing and a negative six millimeter offset. Okay, yeah, the stance is perfect. They stick out just a little yeah. bit on the fender, but that's because you're running some bigger tires. So I am. What do yeah. you got? So these are 37s and they are 12 and a half inches wide. They're the Milestar Patagonias. Uh, I kind of went that direction for the lightness of the tire. I yep. knew the rig was going to be heavy. Heavy, so I'm trying to cut weight without sacrificing performance wherever I can. So I went with those. They're lighter. They're very sticky on the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. They're quiet on road. Yeah. So just an over all around good tire. Serving you well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to run 37s, we had to do some work on the suspension. We did. What you What are you doing? So this is an Icon Stage 8 uh, two inch lift kit. Okay. It does have the uh, remote reservoir shocks. All control arms have been replaced, and the rear ones are all billet aluminum, okay. so it looks really cool. I tried to figure out if I could make those bronze, but you know, <laughs> it was a little more challenging. Okay. Um, and it got hydro bump stops in there, and I think that's about it. Okay, now the the reservoirs are adjustable. They are. What are you What are you running for settings on those? So due to the weight of the vehicle, the rear I've got them set all the way firm. Okay. Uh, in the front. It's also the diesel engine, which is heavier than the Wrangler. So I've got them running at about a seven, but they're they're pretty stiff. Yeah, I, I've you know I've followed you behind you plenty of times on road and off road, and, yeah. and this thing's pretty stable. It's not doing no. the sway dance or anything no. like and, that. No, and and that's a an upgraded Hellwig sway bar in the back. Okay. So that helped out a lot with that. It, okay. it was it was a noticeable difference. Oh so, uh, yeah. Yeah. And now the the Hellwig sway bar has different settings on it to it make it firmer. Uh, what what do you have it set? I on? have it all the way firm. Okay. Just I knew there was going to be the weight back there. Okay, gotcha. Uh, let's talk about the axles. So uh, you have yeah. the stock uh, Dana 44s on here. All stock and shafts for now. Okay. So there's some plans down the road, but for now everything's stock. Okay, all right. Well, that's good because they're definitely going to, over time, we start getting after it. Yeah. want to make sure you have a little bit of insurance. Now, the gearing with the Rubicon comes with 373s? 373s on the diesel. Okay. So I've noticed with... It runs fine, and it you can see in the videos it, it does great. Yeah, I just I, I'm gonna regear. Not sure if I'm gonna go to 488s or 513s. I don't know if I need to go that far, but at least to 488s, I think. Okay, uh, we're gonna get asked, so we might as well just answer it. Fuel economy. So this trip that we just did, yeah. 10 days over 3,300 miles on and off road, I averaged 22.4 or 22.5 miles to the gallon. That's ridiculous. Dude. It is. That's I ridiculous. It's That's insane. That's pretty amazing to be uh, this heavy, have this large of tires, and off-roading yeah. to the average that is pretty yeah. respectable. So the diesel's doing its job. It is. Okay, Under Armour. Any, any Under Armour? Everything's stock right now, just the Rubicon skid plates. Uh, looking for a set of aluminums that will go with the diesel and a lift kit. It, yeah. it gets a little challenging uh, given that everything's opposite on the diesel. Right. Uh, exhaust and everything's and gas tanks on the opposite side. Right. Uh, aluminum though is super necessary just because I think so. you don't need to go heavier. No. Uh, you mentioned uh, fuel tank. The fuel tank on this is 18.3? I believe it's 18.3 and we have a five gallon def fluid tank Def fluid there. tank. Yeah. Any plans to do any uh, auxiliary tanks or 
Anything? If someone comes out with one that's easy, clean, and simple to install that works, yeah. I think I would be interested. Yeah. yeah. Well, with 21 miles to the gallon, I don't know. Man. I know. You may not need I know. it. So. All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk about the business end uh, of this Jeep because, man, I'm super excited about yeah. what you've done back there. It's awesome. Josh, if I could rewind in time, uh, when I first bought my Gladiator, and I would have loved to have been able to do something like this. Unfortunately, stuff like this wasn't out at the time, but I think this is, and this is the ideal overland expedition setup. Talk about the camper that you have on the back here. So the camper on the back is the Alucab Canopy Camper, and it uh, comes with different fitment kits for different vehicles, and as you can tell, the fitment on this thing is incredible it's so nice and if you Super take clean. yeah if you take the time to seal it it's incredible because i had no dust no water intrusion nothing came in this thing the entire 10 days that we were out yeah i mean the, there's no overhang really i mean it's perfectly fit with this yeah really nice what's the what's the weight on something like this so it's just under 500 pounds so okay. it is all aluminum yeah and which kept it very light yeah, the, the heaviest part is probably the goose gear stuff inside. Okay, let's talk about the tent up top, which you can only access from the inside. Correct. Right? Talk yeah. to about that. So you go in and through and up, and there's a bed in there when it's fully folded down just under nine feet. It's, nine feet. It's crazy. Yeah, That's... it's super long. Yeah. Big yeah. tall guys like you, no problem. No problem. Mattress is pretty comfortable. It's very comfortable. Yeah. And what's cool is you can stand up inside here yeah. and uh, and and I'll tell you that's pretty nice to have uh, having a little privacy when you're changing your clothes doing some hygiene stuff to be able to stand up tall instead of being compacted in a little rooftop right. tent pretty nice it is uh, you push the bed up it folds up in line with the roof line and the entire bed is open so you can walk around if you'd really yeah, like to but that, yeah it's nice that's pretty cool uh, and now you have access uh, on both sides as well uh, and you got some mesh on here talk about that yeah so access in both sides you've got the mesh mosquito nets you've got a blackout shade you can zip down uh, if you wanted to keep those open uh, for some privacy yeah. and allow air to come in uh, you've got just so much access to get inside you don't have to take everything out and stick it around camp and then yeah. go pack it all back up which was a thing with the wrangler that kind of annoyed me yeah. so i was like unpack pack it up yeah, right this is great yeah uh what awning do you have up here it's a iucab uh 270 awning that okay. they run uh extremely sturdy has safety guide poles if you need them in really bad wind okay. but um no it's it's done very very well it even comes with a little rain gutter that connects it to the canopy should you need uh, to stay out of the rain when trying to go in and out it, it protects that area nice and what are you uh what are you leaning up against over there so these are gp factor a company that does a lot of aftermarket items for the alley cab canopy camper they do tables they do molly panels they do chimneys but... <laughs> we'll talk about the chimney in a minute <laughs> So that was really nice. I noticed at camp because you were hanging paper towels off there oh, yeah. and you love cooking. And so yeah. that was nice to have all that stuff, right? Yeah, all the cooking utensils kind of go up there. I'm yeah. trying to figure out how to store them, you know, taking a cue from Marco and yeah. doing some organizing back here with the, with the kitchen. Okay. Uh, and then what's this big blue guy right here? It's the propane tank. So okay. normally you'd run about a five pound for cooking, but because of that thing over there, I had to get a little bigger one and, uh, you know, the aesthetic thing. So I had it paint matched. To the truck and okay and it, what what mount are you using it, it's the power tank mount okay and that bolts into an optional molly panel that has a lot of different configurations you can do fuel cans shovels max tracks whatever you want it, nice. it'll fit back so up. you got all kinds of options uh, but now the cool thing is is that uh, when you need to use this you're hard plumbed correct uh, here for your propane yeah josh why are you hard plumbed for your propane well at night you can plug straight in and then when you're inside there's a fireplace in here <laughs> that keeps you warm at night um, it's made uh, a kit by GP factor okay uh, lets you install that it's a marine grade uh, fireplace it actually has a flame that flickers and burns yeah. it's a propane fireplace uh, adjustable heat has a little blower on it it it's really nice yeah uh, and that's I mean it looks cool the first time sure. I saw it I was like what but it's really nice I mean you know we've carried the mr. buddy heaters oh, yeah. around and that, that actually adds condensation inside it it's not the best benefit uh, that is super cool and who can not many people can say they have a chimney on their gladiator so that's pretty unique yeah it is okay uh, talk about the storage setup you got on the inside so goose gear makes a custom specific uh, setup for the vehicle and whatever canopy you're running so okay. this is built specifically for the alucab with a gladiator all right um, it has a 
plate that levels everything in the bottom of the bed. And then I did a two drawer system on the right here. It's where I do a lot of my cooking utensils, right. things that I need to grab while cooking. Uh, if, you, if you move further to the right, there's a reach in storage bin. A lot of dry goods go in there, depending on what groceries I'm bringing. Around the front, there's an adjustable bulkhead, so you can keep it as close to the front of the truck or pull it back further to give yourself more covered storage behind a door. Okay. And in there, I was able to get a cassette toilet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, also a propane fireplace is up there. Let's talk about the cassette toilet okay, for a minute. Yeah. I mean, how convenient is that to uh, have some privacy? But then, I mean, pack it in, pack it out. I mean, you're living that, right? Having oh, yeah. a cassette toilet is pretty nice. It's pretty compact. It is. And uh, it, it, it's super private. In yeah. the middle of the night, you don't have to go right. <laughs> find a tree, worry about animals, any of that stuff. Yeah. It's all right there. Yeah, and we're not messing up the environment because no. you can just dump that yep. at a pit toilet or RV yep. stop or whatever. Okay, and that uh, that propane fire uh, pit, that was super nice it, because a lot yeah. of the places that we have been at lately, we've had fire restrictions and we were able to use that. Yeah, there's something about having a fire at camp, right? Yeah. And I think with the fire bans and everything, it's the responsible thing to do. Yeah. And they're still approved. You can use them. And you're carrying propane and anyway. And you're carrying it anyway. Yeah. Um, but that's the front. And if you go around to the uh, driver's side, there's another two more reach-ins. One of them I put tables, chairs, things that I need to set up camp. Okay. And then the back one is my whole like energy management system. So in there, there's a 100 amp hour Battleborn battery. Uh, it's got a Red Arc charger that does solar as well as alternator power. And I've got a Victron inverter in there as well as in this back panel just behind here, all of the electronics, so switches, uh, gauges, plugs, everything you can imagine is on this panel, extremely clean. Yeah. And you, I've got controls for all the lights inside all these guys uh, just everything in there and uh it's it's really nice yeah it's a great setup man and it is i mean they just done such a nice job in there and i like how there's the platforms that you can sit on if yeah. you need to yeah. and you can stand up if you need to yeah like i said man i wish i could rewind in time yeah. and uh, do the gladiator all over again i you, think you can borrow it anytime you want Brad. oh really <laughs> you heard it you heard it here guys i get to borrow it okay dude let's uh let's talk uh the interior because you still got some more custom stuff inside yeah, there is okay so the storage doesn't just stop at the bed of the truck what have you done in the rear back here so i did a full seat delete uh, goose gear platform makes everything just huge back there. You don't realize yeah. how much room is really back there until you pull a seat out of a Jeep. Yeah, I, I, d I have done it to both of my Wranglers. Yeah. And I was always hesitant about doing it. I'm like, oh, I don't want to lose those seats. And am I really going to gain that much right. storage? It's crazy it is. how much storage you get by doing that. Not only on top of it, but with the access panels underneath, you uh, all my tools and like extreme recovery gear, broken parts, thing, part replacements, yeah. they're under there. Just hopefully I never need them, but they're there. Yeah. And you're fitting a pretty large fridge right here. What do you have? Uh, this is the Dometic CFX 55 liter fridge. I've got it powered through a panel in the goose gear that's wired okay. all the way underneath and to the back where the battery management system is. Okay. So it's running off of the uh, 100 amp hour battery I have in the back. Perfect. Um, and it gives me not only some 12 volt, uh, but some USB, uh, USB plugs also here. So I can charge uh, batteries or you know, little things like that. Okay. Um, and then also what I do is I plug it into the inverter on the Jeep and also have it plugged into the battery because it's smart enough to know which one to use. So when I'm driving, I don't run any battery. And then when I shut down at camp, it goes back to DC off the battery. Nice. Perfect. And what's tucked in uh, behind the fridge? So right behind the fridge on this back wall right here is uh, an ARB dual compressor. Okay. Uh, there's a kit by 813 Fabrication that makes it fit right in two bolts. Very seamless and easy. Yeah. And that, though, I wired to the front. Right. So it goes up to the main battery on the on the motor. Okay. And then you, I mean, it's amazing how much gear you get. You got soft boxes, yeah. water, you've got your scottle and everything back there. And you still have plenty of storage. Yeah. And more importantly, I've got a fire extinguisher and for Brad, a first aid kit. A first aid kit. Of course yeah. you do. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So I'm standing here and I'm yeah. looking up. Uh, before we talk about the, the front part of the cab, what's that big antenna hanging off the top? Well, you got your power wagon and this huge camper and I just had to be like taller than you. So <laughs> like, you know, buildings with the spires, uh -huh. it's, it's actually a WeBoost uh, cell phone reception booster. Okay. Um, and so I've run that on that trip and we noticed, you know, it does work if you have signal to boost. Yeah. That's the key you got to have. Yeah. I, I've purchased one. I haven't installed it yet. And I was curious to see how well yours was going to work. And it was interesting to see that, yeah, yeah as long as they, we had some signal, 
Right. You boosted it and you were able to get, you know, yep. uh, keep in contact with family and friends and yep. business and all that kind of stuff. So that's yeah. nice to have, right? It is. Okay. Uh, talk to me about what you got going on in the cab. You've kept it pretty simple, but you got a couple of unique things in there. Yeah, it's extremely simple. I use all the factory switches. The mounts up front are the bulletproof phone. And then I did do the uh, iPad mount also. Okay. I've got a Molly panel from Molly Panel Solutions up top in between. So I throw radios up there, the handhelds when we're using those. Yeah. I haven't decided exactly what hard mount radio I'm going to go with uh, for a little bit more range. Uh, I got a lot of choices to go with yeah. up there, so I'm still working on that. Yeah, the Molly panel gives you plenty of options too because you can mount a radio up there yep. if you wanted to as well. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, I, it's super clean inside. I don't know, man. I mean, it's a cool overland vehicle, but I think you could do like a little food truck, uh, <laughs> you know, make some tacos back here. I'll take some orders for yeah. you. We'll do it at camp next time with Marco or something. Heck yeah, dude. I think yeah. it's cool. All right, I know uh, that you still have a pretty big list of stuff that you're going to be doing on this, which is crazy because it's pretty awesome as it sits, but what's on your list to do? So I do have the Road Armor uh, rear bumper with the winch inside, so okay. I'll have a rear winch. Um, I also have the American Venture Lab fender chop kit that I want to put on, so I'll be doing some of those things. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest things I think I'm going to do immediately because I have it, I just haven't installed it, is I want to put an onboard water system. Okay. And so then I want to be able to plumb a outdoor shower. Yeah. So I can have some hot water and be able to get clean, not yeah. just shower pouching. Yeah. I mean, right now you're just carrying a jerry can. Uh, how much water are you thinking about putting on board? I'd like to get to 20 okay. gallons, but I'm not really sure if I can get that much back here. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I think the, the, answer to this is pretty obvious, but what's the favorite thing you've done to this truck so far? Um, well, the alley cab. <laughs> <laughs> right. It makes camping and, and what we do so much more enjoyable. Yeah, I, I mean, it's so awesome, man. I really love it. Uh, let's talk about uh, future adventures. What uh, What's on your bucket list right now for this truck? Uh, the biggest one would be uh, Alaska. Yeah, I want to go to Alaska. Yeah, we got to do three or four weeks at least, and, uh, and to have a set like, setup like this is going to be... Oh, yeah. It's going to be nice. It I mean, will. 10 days, you kind of already put it to the test, right? Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, I yeah. think it's going to be awesome. Uh, favorite trip you've been on so far? <sighs> it's really hard because <laughs> I went to Washington and I've never been there before. Yeah. Uh, Death Valley was really cool. It's a toss up between those two. Yeah. It really is. Uh, but if I had to go, I'd say the Washington trip. Yeah. It, it, it was just different. All right. But many, many more trips to come oh, yeah. uh, in this thing. It's going to get put some miles on it. How many miles do you have on it so far? Just over 13,000. Just over 13,000. And how long yeah. have you had it? Uh, since December. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's getting pretty good, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, right on, man. Well, buddy, uh, thank you for taking the time to let us walk around this and look at it. I really appreciate it. And guys, uh, if you are not following Josh on Instagram, head over to SoCal Expedition and make sure you're following him. And then uh, make sure you subscribe to Trail Recon uh, and you will see this truck in a lot more future adventures as we set off uh, and go to some pretty cool places we've got planned for yeah. the rest of this summer. So hope you guys have enjoyed hanging out with us today. Thanks for watching.